in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today the church celebrates the dedication of two of its most important churches, uh, honoring two of the great apostles, St. Peter's at the Vatican City, and St. Paul's outside the walls. I'll have more to say about that during the homily. Uh, but churches are places where people gather to celebrate what has brought us together to celebrate the table of the Lord, the word which we will hear proclaimed. Let's prepare for that by recalling our sins and looking forward to the great reconciliation God offers us in his kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Defend your church, O Lord, by the protection of the holy apostles, that as she received from them the beginnings of her knowledge of things divine, so through them she may receive even to the end of the world an increase in heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of an open door to heaven, and I heard the trumpet-like voice that had spoken to me before saying, come up here and I will show you what must happen afterwards. At once I was caught up in spirit. A throne was there in heaven and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like jasper and carnelian. Around the throne was a halo as brilliant as an emerald. Surrounding the throne, I saw 24 other thrones, on which 24 elders sat, dressed in white garments and with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. Seven flaming torches burned in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass like crystal. In the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. The first creature resembled a lion. The second was like a calf. The third had a face like that of a man and the fourth looked like an eagle in flight. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, were covered with eyes inside and out. Day and night, they do not stop exclaiming, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one who sits on the throne and worship him, who lives forever and ever. They throw down their crowns before the throne, exclaiming, Worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things because of your will they came to be and were created the word of the lord our responsorial psalm is holy 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 lord mighty god holy 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 lord mighty god praise the lord in his sanctuary Praise him in the firmament of his strength. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him for his sovereign majesty. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise him with the blast of the trumpet. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 gold coins and told them, engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, we do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining his kingship, he had the servants called in to whom he had given the money to learn about what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned 10 additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant, he also said, you take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, with your own words, I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put the money in a bank so that on my return, I would have collected it with interest? And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has 10. But they said to him, sir, he has 10 gold coins. He replied, I tell you to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, As for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, contextually, we're nearing the end of Luke's gospel. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem to die uh, and to do exactly what these people expected. They thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. And lo and behold, it did. Although not the way they wanted it to or the way they expected it to. But uh, Jesus wants them to uh, be aware that what they're looking forward to isn't what they're going to get. And so he tells us this parable 
uh, he calls in the servants and gives them things, and, they're sick. He, and he tells them. This is the amazing thing about the one with only one coin. He tells them, engage in trade and see how well you do. And so the two of them do, and one of them doesn't. And he's not happy with the one who doesn't. Well, the point for us is that uh, God gives us something far more valuable than gold coins. It's the gifts and the talents that each of us has been given, each according to our own ability, as we heard in Sunday's gospel. And God expects us to increase those gifts and talents. That's why we went to school. It's why we got a job. It's why we faithfully have come to church, so that we can increase our wisdom, our knowledge, our faith. And so when Jesus does come back, we can say, well, you gave me this much, and I'm returning this much. And so it is that here we are continuing to live today's gospel, increasing the investment that God made in us. And so it is that to whom much has been given, more will be added. And that's why the church very often looks to the, the most faithful of the faithful and says, well, do you realize you have a great gift for dot, 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 and tries to bring people into the active life of the church, to the ministries that we want to do here in our, in our parish and beyond. But for most of us, uh, we got one gold coin. We're not expected to go out and get ordained. We're not expected to join a religious order. We're not expected to uh, do a whole lot of over-the-board stuff. But we are expected to do what the uh, apostles did. Well, we know what that is because we have it in the book of Revelations today. Down here in the middle of the text, it says, uh, the four creatures resembled a lion, a calf, like a face of a man, and an eagle. Well, just step into the vestibule and turn the light on and look around at the four evangelists and you'll see that those are the symbols of the authors of our Gospels. And those symbols remind us what is the underlying good news that we should be sharing with the world around us. It's the same powerful good news that we hear those four images shouting in today's reading from Revelations. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. That's all we have to do, is to share with the world God's Almighty. Wow, that's not hard to do. If we live it because we believe it, we don't even have to say a word. And then we have to understand in our own lives that God is past, present, and future. And the reality of God past, present, and future is the good news. God has not abandoned us and will not abandon us. God's love is everlasting. That's good news that the world needs to hear. Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of today's Mass, it is the Feast of the Basilicas, the dedication of the Basilicas of St. Peter at the Vatican and St. Paul's outside the walls. Um, unfortunately, uh, none of the evangelists is either St. Paul or uh, St. Peter. Uh, Paul is famous for his letters that are in the Bible. Uh, St. Peter wrote a couple of letters that are also in the in the Bible, so they are, in a sense, evangelists, but not those mentioned in today's reading from Revelations. They are, the two basilicas are on the sites uh, where they, those apostles were martyred. Peter, in the Hippodrome that was behind the emperor's winter palace on the Vatican Hill, it was a convenient place set up aside from the, the hubbub of the city of Rome where the breezes blew and it was always nice and uh, he could have private horse races, but he, he martyred uh, Peter there. And St. Paul was killed and uh, beheaded in the garden behind the summer palace of the emperor, just outside the walls of the city. Uh, it's very common even today that in the hotter months, particularly August, 
And if you go to Rome, there's nobody there. They all disappear. Well, so did the emperor. He would leave town, but he didn't go very far. Uh, he had a, a palace just beyond the walls where the breezes blew, and it was nice, and the pungent aroma of Rome didn't bother him too much. And that's where he martyred St. Paul. Uh, and two great churches were built there. Um, St. Peter's, his uh, 16 something or other was dedicated. Uh, the St. Paul's outside the walls burned down and was rebuilt in 1854. And so if you go see that church, it looks like it did in the beginning, but it's a much more modern church. Um, St. Paul's outside the walls is the one where, uh, what's his name? Uh, who was the great uh, predictor of all kinds? Of, Nostradamus went in there and he was distressed because his spouse had just died. He, was, he just didn't know what he was gonna do with his life. And he had this, this vision looking up at the top of the church. And around the edge of the church uh, were these roundels, about the same size as the ones you can see up there and up here, or wherever you look in the church, they're all about the same size. And they, the Holy Fathers were in there, and there were so many empty ones. And Nostradamus counted them, and he thought, oh my goodness, God must have planned to give us a hint about the end of the world by putting these roundels up there and then painting the pictures of the popes on them. Well, somebody saw a show on uh, one of the uh, TV channels, and they were all disturbed that the world was going to end because there were only a couple of empty ones. And once... Um, John Paul II, and I believe Benedict and Francis are gone. Oh, there's no more roundels to put in there. And the world's going to come to an end. I said, don't worry. By the time that comes, they'll build an addition. We don't use those kinds of things to tell the future. We don't use those kind of things to scare people. We use those kind of things to remind ourselves that we had holy fathers. And if we need another row below the first row, we'll put a row in there to celebrate the tradition and the history of our church. And so it is that if, you know, we found some roundels here. There's a couple sitting right over there. They'll be put on the wall. If we find more, we'll find a place for them. Because it's not telling the history or the, the future. It's looking to the past and what it has to offer to us today. And if we do go to St. Paul's outside the walls and you see all of those holy fathers up there and you think, hasn't God been great that he has given us that succession of leadership so that we can look to the reality of what Jesus told Peter and the other 11 and that what he told them has been faithfully passed on from this Holy Father to this Holy Father to this Holy Father and through them to all of the bishops so that what we know today of Jesus Christ is what Jesus Christ himself gave to the apostles. So when you go over there, don't, don't be all upset when you see there's only a couple of spaces left. It's not, not a, a threat that God is going to end the world tomorrow. It's a wonderful memory of those who gave us what we so preciously guard today. Let us raise our voices in prayer as we always do when we gather as God's faithful people. And let's begin by praying for the Universal Church, particularly as this is the dedication of physical structures, that the physical structures of our church might always be welcoming homes for those who go there to worship and that they might find a true encounter with the real presence of Jesus Christ at the altar, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who lead the world's nations, that they might be filled with a spirit of kindness, compassion, and service for their people, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for Central America, which has experienced within two weeks two devastating hurricanes 
that through the kindness and generosity of their neighbors, uh, they might find the relief that they need in this time of stress and difficulty. We pray to the Lord. And let's pray that there is great good news behind the headlines that the uh, vaccines that are being produced against the coronavirus have a very good success rate and that they might be approved for use and be found to be safe and effective in ending the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who have been victimized by the pandemic, especially now those who are once again facing uncertain futures because of limiting our businesses and our our gatherings, uh, that by ending the pandemic, we might assure them a good job, a good future, a good living. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray too for all those who have died, especially the victims of the coronavirus. Those especially in our own communities here in, in Lucas County, that their families might be consoled by our prayers and our concern of love and compassion. We pray to the Lord. O loving and almighty God, you summon us together to be your faithful people, raising our voices in prayer for our neighbors. We pray that having heard these prayers, it might be your will to answer them in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For it is through your goodness that we have this bread, which we offer to you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we bring you this offering of our service, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that the truth handed down to us by the ministry of the apostles Peter and Paul may endure undefiled in our hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread said the blessing 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Patroness of our sister parish, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and St. Patrick, our own patron, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's share with those around us a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, who will take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who will take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who will take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May your people, we pray, O Lord, nourished by the bread of heaven, rejoice in commemorating the apostles Peter and Paul, for it is through your gift that we are governed under their patronage, through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, next Wednesday will be the a vigil celebration for Thanksgiving. I invite uh, everyone to take the opportunity to uh, come to the table of the Lord. Eucharist means Thanksgiving. It's a Greek word, Thanksgiving. And so it would be very appropriate if many of us would uh, share at the table of the Lord uh, in celebration of that uh, annual feast day. Also, my administrative assistant, uh, Amy Meager, over at uh, Immaculate Conception, uh, is uh, battling what I believe she called yesterday when I was talking with her a random strange disease or something like that. They, they don't know what it is or why it's doing what it is. Uh, so I'd ask that you say a prayer for her that uh, uh, her physicians be able to figure out what's wrong and bring about a cure. We know it's not COVID virus, uh, but we're not sure what it is. So please say a prayer for her. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>